What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we are going to be talking about the top 5 most overpowered players in NBA 2K20, my team. And again, this is the December edition, so I will leave it on the screen right now who the top 5 were in November. Obviously starters were top 5, next 5 were the next 5 best. Well, best, best of each position. So, before we get on this video, if you guys are new to the channels and you like my team content, subscribe. There is no channel on YouTube that posts as much. My team goes into that more in depth on every different part of the mode than um, this channel right here. And also, we are trying to hit 135,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So, if we could even come close to that, I don't think we're going to hit it, but if we could even come close to that goal, I'll be delighted. So, anyway, now we are going to get on to the players. So we are going to have obviously one per each position and a honorable mention at each position. So, and also, um, these are only players that you can buy. And I'm also including players that you can lock in for. So for example, Jay or Smith, Clay Thompson, you could lock in a set for them. All the moments of the week cards you could lock in for certain players. They are all eligible for this squad. However, Cards like token rewards aren't eligible, as well as player of the month rewards, and also um, the collector level rewards. But I don't think any collector level rewards or token rewards really, except for obviously center and David Robinson. He's the only one of those that would make this list. But there is like the Baron Davis player of the month would definitely be there for point guard, but obviously you cannot buy him. But anyway, now let's get onto the list. So the point guard position at number one, we are going to put in the closest thing to Baron Davis. You could argue he's a slightly better Baron Davis or slightly worse Baron Davis, depending on what you prefer, and it's Derrick Rose. So Derrick Rose is 99-96, six foot three point guard, and his stats are good. Badges are really, really good though. Hall of Fame quick first step and downhill. He is arguably the best player on the fast break in his entire game. He's a Hall of Fame giant star as well. Gold Dimer, Gold Clamps, so he's a good defender. Gold Floor General. And the big thing, he's got Gold Quick Draw, Unreal Release, and Range Extender. So that is classic. He's got some great shooting badges. And again, Range Extender is a really, really big badge to have your point guard because you don't realize it. But the ability to kind of snatch back into a three in the pick and roll is such a big thing. And especially with the fact that the blow by exists, the blow by and the snatchback are always synonymous with each other because you have to obviously play a little bit more off a player to deal with the blow by. And if you're on balling it, the snatchback is going to be open every time. And without range extender, you sometimes snatch back too far. So that is a really important badge for point guard, especially on the elite level. He has got a great mid range, great three ball, a 98 dunk, 98 ball handle, unreal passing stats, good perimeter defense. And look at that, perfect speed, speed with ball, and acceleration. 92 lateral quickness, and yeah, it's just a really, really good card. So, number two, I'm going to say this right now. If Allen Iverson's primary position was point guard, he would be number two. So I'm going to say this is an honorable mention. Problem is that he's a six foot tall player. If he's a, There are better two guards than him. But he would be number two in point guard. Iverson's a really good shooter, good dunker. Super good handle, good passer, good on defense, really fast. He's got good lateral quickness as well. Really great Hall of Fame badges. Unfortunately, no range extender. He's got stuff like pickpocket, he's got clamps. So he's just a slightly worse version of like Derrick Rose and um, Baron Davis. Problem is again, Iverson, um, he only has got, he doesn't have range extender, which is a bit of a problem. But again, because he's a two guard, he's not eligible to play it there. And there are better two guys. So he's not gonna be on the list. But what we are gonna do, this is again a close one because you're looking at cards like Dame Lillard and Arenas who are just offensive beasts and Steph Curry as well. Three Hall of Fame range extender players. I'd say of these three guys, I'd say a Lillard may be the best and Steph followed by Arenas then Steph. You got John Wall who's a slasher, also a decent shooter and also is a really good defender as well. I'm pretty sure he's gold clamps, doesn't he? He's silver clamps, but he feels like he's got the fender. But the player I'm going to go with is a guy that I've only started recently using because a lot of the like quote unquote comp players, like the best players in the world, all use this guy. So I've started using him again. I realized how good he is. So John Stockton has got nine Hall of Fame badges, including Hall of Fame clamps. So he's basically just clamps up the other team's point guard, the blow by. You just can't blow by John Stockton. He's a little bit small, can't really defend any of the kind of bigger point guards, post up cheesing. And also, not the best in the pick and roll, 
But the thing is with John Stockton, there's not that many great post-up cheese point guards because most people prefer to blow buys. I think later on in the year, he's going to be really kind of outclassed and height is going to be more of a factor. But right now, he's number two. Then at the two guard position, number one, I'm going to put Zach Levine. So Zach Levine has one of the best releases in the game, averaging 15.5 points for, per game for me, shooting 66% from three, eight Hall of Fame badges, clutch shooter, He's got 26 gold badges, clamps as well, so he's going to be a locked-in defender, range extender, quick draw, quick first step, unreal release, difficult shots, great shooting off the move, and it's just an unbelievable card. And number two, and this is, again, a really close one between number one and number two, and I think there's a big, big drop-off after that. So I'm just saying this right now. I have not yet used Drew Holiday. I do not know how good this card is going to be. He's got some good Hall of Fame badges, a pink diamond. He's got clamps, defensive leader. He's got quick draw. The thing is, though, no range extender, so I don't think he's going to be as good as the other guy I'm going to put in as my number two, and it's Kobe Bryant. So the next best players at this position are the likes of Harden, um, Phil Chenier, Bradley Beal, um, Terrence Ross, Jeff Petrie, or um, J.R. Smith, Tracy McGrady, but none of those guys have got the defense that Levine or Kobe have. So these guys are what I'm gonna call the perfect wings. And I think there are like three of them in the game. They are guys that have got clamps, have got quick first step. I've also got a good dunk, good three ball, good release, good quick draw, range extender, and are lockdown defenders. So Kobe Bryant, just like Levine, has got um, range extender and quick draw, but Kobe's a beast defensively. He's got gold intimidator. He's got hall of fame clamps and off ball pest. Tireless defender as well. Great three ball, great mid, great dunk, great ball handle. His release is unbelievable. 92 perimeter defense, great speed, speed ball acceleration, 90 hour quickness. And it's personal preference why I have Levine over Kobe, but you could definitely argue Kobe over Levine as the number one two guy in this game. At the three is the third, for lack of a better word, perfect wing in this game, and it's Paul George. These three guys are guys without weakness. There is no weakness to Zach Levine, Paul George, or Kobe Bryant. They are for lack of a bet, like, I'm gonna call that the, per the term, the perfect wing. Cards with no weaknesses and are, have strengths everywhere. Cards you can't leave open even from really deep because they've got range extender. And cards you also can't blow by because they've got clamps. Cards that aren't small either, and all cards are quick for a step so they can blow by other teams' players. So Paul George has got four Hall of Fame badges. They're not the biggest deal in the world, but his uh, gold badges are great. He's got Quick draw, range extender, gold clamps, gold defensive leader, gold intimidator, gold difficult shots. He's got gold green machine, gold dead eye, and he's got silver quick first step and stop and go, which means he can still blow by people because of his height of six foot nine. He's uh, got a good three ball, good mid range shot. Again, anything over 85, it doesn't matter. It's all about release after that. 97 driving dunk, he can speed boost as well. 95 perimeter defense though, great speed, speed bonding acceleration, great lateral quickness, and is an unbelievable card. Next, we have got I was considering a few players, like obviously Kevin Durant, you can consider him um, to you, you can consider using him, LeBron James, uh, Melo's good offensively, Luka Doncic, especially one that can play point guard is good. Well, both of these are good, they're literally the same card, small forward position. And um, Bruce Bowen, who is just clamps. And you know what? You know what? I'm, even though this wouldn't be my personal preference, so many people use this guy. And if you like, if you run with Giannis with the ball, he is the most dangerous player in the game. With the ball in his hands, the most dangerous player. 98, 99, four Hall of Fame badges, 13 gold badges, including Intimidator, Heart Crusher. No quick first step, but that really doesn't matter. He's got a much better three point shot than the other Giannis, as well as 86 ball control, which is huge. He's got a 95 driving dunk, 85 standing dunk. He's got good post game as well. He's got a great block steel perimeter and interior defense, great speed, speed, ball and acceleration, great lateral quickness. So he's the best defensive card in the game, even without the badges. He's the most versatile, well, he's the most versatile defensive card in the game. Probably not the best that is locking up one player with the most versatile card. He's not the worst shooter in the world, but he's not a good shooter. So you can still leave him quite, quite a bit open. The thing is with Giannis though, is that there are still, like if you do not have him on the ball, if you're, say for example, if you're running with this lineup here, with these three guys on the bench, and you decide, I want to run through Stockton. Giannis is worthless on the floor. However, if you keep the ball in his hand, he's very good. So he, in the right hands, Giannis is really, really good. In the wrong hands, he's a, he is the liability. He can be the reason you lose games if you don't know how to use Giannis. 
And even though a lot of people use Yanis and they destroy bad opponents with him, if you don't actually know how to use Yanis, and I'm going to put my hand up and say I'm a person that doesn't really know how to use Yanis, so I don't use him much. But if you do know how to use him, he's unbelievable. And then at the power forward position, we are going to go with number one in a little bit of a weird one. I'm going to go with Pascal Siakam. Pascal Siakam, six foot nine. He's got seven Hall of Fame badges, a lot of defensive ones. He's got quick draw, clamps, intimidator. He's a really good defender. He's also got no post game, but that's fine. Small ball four, four out. He's got a really good three ball, good mid range shot, good free throw, good standing and driving dunk. Not the best ball handle, but he's insanely versatile on defense. Great rebounder and really, really fast with the ball. So he can actually be used as one of your main offense players as well as being one of the best defense players in the game. Honestly, if I was, I have him in my best squad over Giannis, the power forward position. So I think Siakam definitely deserves a spot here. And then last up, we are going to be using, or second is Richard Lewis. A lot of people are saying, oh, Richard Lewis got no defense. And that is, that is true. Like eight Hall of Fame badges, catch and shoot, volume shooter, difficult shots, tire to score, slippery off ball, green machine, flexible release, dead eye. He's got um, gold steady shooter, gold hot zone under gold, quick draw, gold range extender gold anchor breaker he's realistic a small forward that can play power forward but he's 6'10 so he's got decent height post game is all right great three ball great mid-range release is fantastic great dunker he's got really good ball control as or ball handle as well block rating non-existent perimeter defense and interior defense not good but like they're not absolutely terrible rebounding not good but not terrible again good speed speed ball and acceleration good enough lateral quickness especially for a wing and or for a big man so he's actually not the worst in the world at defending anyone He's not going to be absolutely destroyed. But he's the power for most of your run is stretch fours at the power four position. Like, it's not like he'll be absolutely roasted by a Yanis or anything because he does have the height to match up with him. He obviously just doesn't have the defensive stats or badges. So he's not going to be good, but he's not going to be so bad on defense that negates the fact he is the best offensive power forward in this game by a country mile. By an absolute mile, he's the best offensive one. So he has to be somewhere on this list. And now we're on to the center position. So... Without question, number one is Duncan. He does everything. I Duncan's got 12 Hall of Fame badges, including back down Punisher and Intimidator. Intimidator is a huge one. So if anyone's near him, he's going to basically um, affect their ability to make a shot. Goal defense, a leader, goal quick draw. Even with quick draw, the release is terrible though. Hot zone hunter, gold, corner specialist, green machine, deep fades. If he's wide, wide open, hit the three. His three pointer is 80, but it feels like it's about 50. Or no, it feels like it's about 70. I'd say. He doesn't shoot it consistently, but when he's wide open, he'll hit shots. Good mid-range shot. Great post game. He's also got back down Punisher Hall of Fame, so he will bully people inside. Driving of 85 is good. He's got an 85 steal, 96 block. Great interior defense. Not terrible perimeter defense. Good speed and acceleration. Obviously, he's not going to go do much with the ball, but he is fast without it. Great offense, defensive rebounding. Ladder point 70 is not terrible. 98 strength means he won't get pushed around at all, and he's just going to be beast defensively. So... Tim Duncan is without question the best center you can buy in the game right now. Second, in my opinion, only to David Robinson in the best centers in this game. And number two, center wise, it all depends on your play style. There's for every play style, Duncan's number one, in my opinion. So if you guys don't need your center to shoot, use Will Chamberlain as number two, but he's so expensive. If you want a kind of cheaper version of a card that'll do a similar job to Will Chamberlain, I guess. Rick Smith, while he's not obviously as fast and as athletic, he makes up for just being a giant if you want a non-shooting center. Um, we've got, if you just want your center to, play, to shoot the ball, you can't get much better than Vucevic because he's not the worst defender and he's good inside. However, if you kind of, I, the way I run the full court press, I need mobile centers, which is why I love using Tim Duncan. Um, and I would have, like previously I've used George Mikan, and the difference is, is that Anthony Davis is a faster George Mikan. Anthony Davis, six foot ten. He is definitely undersized, and you should definitely have a big center. If you're on these two guys, you should have a big center when the last year off the bench, just to uh, just in case he is kind of struggling. But he's got Hall of Fame Intimidator, which means it's not easy to score against him, as well as Hall of Fame Rim Protector. He's got goal quick draw. He's got a really good release. Uh, goal defensive leader and back down punisher. He's also got a decent three ball, decent mid range shot, great post game. Got a great dunk. He's got a great block and great interior defense. Not the worst perimeter defense. Got good, really good speed and acceleration. Decent speed of ball. Great rebounding stats. And lower quickness is not terrible. So, yeah. 
In my opinion, these are the most overpowered players in this game. Obviously the best as my starting five and the second best as my bench five. And these are only players you can buy. If we were to look at the best of the best, um, John Stockton will be replaced by Baron Davis. The two guys, we still have we still have Kobe and Levine. Small forwards. You can it's a debatable one. Paul George still number one without question. It's a debatable one at number two. You could maybe put Grant Hill in there. Power forwards. I don't know. Blake Griffin. Again, it's another debatable one. Blake Griffin or Serge Ibaka. Serge Ibaka Opal probably in there somewhere. But again, that's a debatable one. And centers, without question, um, for Anthony Davis, David Robinson comes in. And David Robinson is the best, followed by Tim Duncan. But anyway, yeah, that is the video. These are the most OP players. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.